Hello, and welcome to our study of the ABCs of a Godly Heart by Cassandra Martin. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the word integrity. Integrity is a noun, and it means honest, upright, faithful, to be whole, and undivided. Our key verse today is 1 Chronicles 29, verse 17, which says, I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. As we walk with God, He wants us to be wholly His, not fractured or broken. He wants us to walk with Him completely and for our hearts to be one with His. He wants us to walk with integrity. How do we typically describe a person of integrity? Um, that person is definitely an honest person. Telling the truth, even when it's difficult, is the mark of a person who walks with integrity. Lying breaks things. It breaks the truth. It breaks our word. It breaks the way we represent ourselves to others and to contrasting pieces. Stealing and cheating are different forms of lying. Dishonesty in all forms creates fractures in our souls. Cassandra notes that most importantly, lying breaks the heart of God. And that thought just makes me want to cry. This is a terrible thought. Integrity, though, is more than honesty. It's building our lives around one thing. And God wants to be that one thing. He wants everything about our lives to revolve around Him and through Him. Job was a man who built his life around God. Let's turn to Job 2, verse 3. Kim, do you want to read that for us? It says, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Throughout the story of Job, he successfully keeps his focus on God. He holds God at the center of his thoughts, his mind, everything. Can you imagine your name coming from the lips of God someone as someone who maintained integrity through trial? If we want to walk closely with God, it can't be halfway. Halfway is like the danger zone to me. That's where you get trapped in cycles of sin. That's where your mind gets clouded and your judgment gets clouded. It has to be all the way for it to, for, for it to transform us. God consistently teaches in the Bible that our hearts are designed to rest on one foundation. We cannot maintain a dedicated focus on two things. Matthew 6, 24 tells us that we cannot serve two masters for we will love one and hate the other. Satan plants many masters in our paths to distract us from serving the one true God and God alone. Satan plants masters like power, knowledge, popularity, career success, being busy, money, and so much more. In order to be people of integrity, we must build our lives on one truth, that God is God. We choose deliberately and consistently to be made whole in Jesus. Our one purpose is to imitate Christ. Our one focus is to please God. And our one love is the Lord who loved us first. Integrity demands that we make God our whole lives, not a fractured piece of our lives. He must be the integral part of our hearts, our families, our jobs, our time, our energy, our resources, and our talents. Integrity understands that God shapes every piece of our lives. Mark 12, 28 through 31 teaches us the importance of God to love him and to love other people. Loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength is the pattern for building a life of integrity. So let's break down each one of those. Our heart. This is the center of our lives and our emotions. It describes who we are and what is important to us. 
To love God with all of our hearts is to make His the one desire of our heart. Our our soul, our soul is the center of worship. The biggest threat to integrity of our souls is that we will not give up worshiping God entirely, but that we will fracture our worship. You know, I can relate to that. I would never stop coming to worship services altogether. I would never throw my Bible in the trash and pretend it never existed, but I would be fractured. I have been fractured many times to where my focus was not where it needed to be in my worship. And that is not having a heart of full integrity. Being busy, being distracted, those are the ways that Satan fractures our worship and our soul. To be a woman of integrity, my soul and worship needs to be to God alone and not to things of this world. Our minds, our minds are the center of our thoughts and the tools from which we process ideas and information. Integrity of the mind means that we bring every thought and idea captive under the control of Christ. The mind is our filter and we need our filter to be G-rated. God rated. Integrity of the mind means that our entertainment, our books, our TV shows, our movies, our music, to be godly, something that fills us up instead of draining us and marring us with sin. The last thing is our strength. To have the integrity of strength means our bodies. What are we doing to have our bodies be of integrity? This means that we have our bodies with um, modesty. Our bodies are kept with purity. Our bodies, uh, we honor and we respect our bodies. We take care of ourselves so that we can be servants of Christ. So we are going to look at Psalm 119 verses 113 to 120. And that says... I hate double-minded men, but I love your law. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Sustain me according to your promise, and I will live. Do not let my hopes be dashed. Uphold me, and I will be delivered. I will always have regard for your decrees. You reject all who stray from your decrees, for their deceitfulness is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore, I love your statutes. My flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your laws. What's dross? It's scum removed from molten ore or metal. Ew, that's gross. Okay, so... This passage could be seen as a pledge of a person of integrity because it's like a plea to be bound to God. He is our refuge, our shield, our sustainer, and deliverer. Away from me, you evildoers. Sometimes we need to say that to ourselves in our mind. Get those things out of the way. We have to put every piece of our lives in His hands. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Next week, we're going to be studying the letter J, which is judge and joy. Thank you.